Welcome back to my channel everybody. Today we are going to be taking a look at five reasons why you should study economics at university. So last week I made a video talking about five, in my opinion, very valid reasons why you might not want to study economics at university. Now, I spent three years studying it, so I really kind of knew the reasons why I wouldn't want to study it again. But today we're going to be focusing on the positives because I said if the video gets 100 likes, which it did, then I'd make another one talking about the five positives of studying economics. And there are so many vlogs, videos, exam failures, exam successes, day in the life on my channel that you should definitely go and check them out. I'll leave a play playlist link down in the description below to all my yearly vlogs and economics content. So without further ado, let's jump into five reasons why you should study economics at university. And if you do go on to enjoy this video guys, please do drop a like, it really helps me out. So the first reason why you should study economics at university is that once you graduate, you have a chance to have a really high paying on average job. As I'm sure you all know, economics involves a lot of finance, accounting, business, economic models, economic outlook, and the economy in general is roughly all about money. And once you have a degree in economics, you learn so many valuable skills that a business would happily snap you up. You know, you can move into the finance sector in terms of investing, equities, securities, insurance. You can become an advisor. You can even work in the government. I think that the thing about economics is that there's so much scope to enter a high paying field because the people that deal with money and make decisions that ultimately allow companies to make more money always get paid a Good sum. And the skills you learn in economics in your degree are primed for helping others make money. Because if you understand money, if you understand consumers, if you understand stocks and shares and companies, then you're going to understand better than most how to make money. So a lot of people choose to study economics because once you graduate, you do get a decent paying grad job on average, no guarantee. And if you would like me to make a video of the highest paying degrees and seeing where economics fits in this, let's get this video to 150 likes and I'll, uh, and I'll get that done for you. But yeah, on the, on the back of money, I think when I decided to study economics at university, it really was because in my sixth form days, I was like, I love business. I want to start my own business. I want to make money when I'm older. What should I study? Economics. And I, and I think it's the same with a lot of my friends who went on to study economics. We always kind of like, yeah, we, we like making money. But I think my decision to study economics was heavily influenced by the, the grad salary prospects. Moving on to the second reason why you should study economics is that surprisingly, and I didn't really realize this at the time, during my degree, I learned so many real world concepts. Like I always remember in like certain subjects in GCSE, A-level days, you'd learn this really hard math and you'd be like, why on earth am I learning this? I'm never gonna use it again. This is a waste of my time. And, and after I finished my A-levels and GCSEs, other than the slight general knowledge increase, I was like, it's fantastic that I've learned all this stuff, but when am I ever gonna use it? And then during my economics degree, not only did I start using the stuff that I learned in GCSE and A-levels just generally to, to understand the concept and to use the maths. But I was actually learning a fair bit of stuff that applied and could be applied to everyday life in real world society. And it was clear that the stuff that we was doing in, in the lectures and in exams, despite being super hard, was relevant to real day and everyday life. And it was cool seeing how, you know, for example, one of the things we learned, I've talked about it before, is if you've ever gone to your local row of shops and all of the fast food chains are located right next to each other, you might think, well, why don't they spread out and get, you know, money over here and money over here, you know, there's gonna be more clientele for them if they spread out. But we learned stuff like why them being together is actually the most efficient solution for them to get the most money in customers and revenue and profit. So that, that itself is called the hoteling model. It's a fairly basic real world concept, but again, in terms of real world application, economics really changed my outlook on how I consume and what I'm doing in terms of what I would choose to consume, is it A or B? Like every time now I go through an economic like process in my head and I determine what I should consume. But it sounds a bit sad, but it's given me the skills in everyday life to make rational decisions. And when my decisions I know are rational, it makes me very confident in what I'm saying, doing and spending my money on. So really economics has ultimately given and changed my whole outlook on life by teaching me so many real world applications of content. And I think when you're looking to study a degree, the more use you have throughout your life from your degree knowledge, it is much better personally, I believe that. Because then, you know, the, the more you use that knowledge, you'll never forget it. The more you kind of use it, the more value you get for the money of your degree and so on. So moving on to the third reason why you should study economics. If you saw my video when I was talking about five reasons why you shouldn't study it, I said about how you don't get the best value for money in terms of contact hours. So this that point slightly conflicts with number three why you should study it, is the fact that economics in this current state 
gives you a great balance between academia and fun. You're never really too bogged down with work that you can't go out and socialize, but at the same time, you always have work to be doing if you wanted to do work. And, and personally, I think university is roughly about having that good balance between work and fun. And I, I think economics provides that. And thinking about it, it's no surprise that economics have found the sweet spot between academia and fun. They found the uh, equilibrium for enjoyment probably. And they probably did do that because they're economists. Because I think when you go to university, you don't want to have so much work that every time your friends are spontaneously going out or, you're, or playing football or going to the pub, etc., you never want to have an, too much work where you're like, oh, sorry guys, I can't come because it kind of defeats the object of university. Because I think university is so much about having fun, going out, making friends, experiencing life in a certain like climate. That if you had too much work, it would be pointless, you know? But on the, on the flip side, you don't want to be paying £9,000 for an hour of tuition every week. So when I was at university in Sydney and the UK, I had about 13 hours of contact time per week on average. And I think that was a nice balance with the 13 hours with, you know, going out, socialising, having a life and then doing my homework and external work. And if, you, and if you study economics or have studied it, let me know in the comments down below if you think that that balance is good or bad or would you like to see more or less. If I could choose, I would rather have about 16 contact hours per week. Okay, so next up on the list, number four, is that <laughs> this could be quite controversial, okay? It's obviously dependent on the university, where you go, what your type of people is, and you, I guess. But I feel like you meet a lot of cool people in economics. All of the people I met during my degree, I never met somebody I didn't like. I made some great friends. And I think that, you know, when you're studying a subject, all your course mates generally you get on with. But I just think economics people are cool. It's such a subjective thing for me to say that I'm really not going to elaborate too much on it. But in, in classes, surprisingly, you know, there's a good uh, split between like genders, I think. There's often a reputation that economics is all boys, but I think it's a very good split. So that might be a positive. And there's, you know, there's international students, there's n um, domestic ones. There's a nice balance of people, type of person, sporty, non-sporty, etc. So there's, there's great variety. And I think everyone's super chill. And the fifth and final reason why I think studying economics is great is because when everybody asks you, what do you study? Um, and you say economics, you kind of sound a bit smart. Yeah. Like in terms of university culture, for example, like if you say, oh, what do you study? They say history. It's like, oh, bro, you probably just have reading all the time or you have no contact time. And it's like, oh. But if you study economics, you're like, yeah, study economics. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, of course you do. Yep, you must be smart. And it's like, well, how smart are you? Well, I don't know. Depends how well you're doing. But, you know, economics carries a bit of clout when people ask you what you've trained for, what you've studied in jobs, on campus. And it makes you feel smart as well. So that's the fifth and final reason why I'd say study economics. So in my opinion, there are five reasons why I think you should study economics at university. Let me know in the comments down below if you are going to be studying it, if you're choosing between them, or if you studied it and agree or disagree with what I said. Thank you so much for watching. Please do leave a like on this video. Basically, it really helps the algorithm. So if you can leave a like, I appreciate it. Spreading economics to more people, of course, if you do do that. Today we are going to be taking a look at Crypto.com coin. I recently reviewed this and again people have been asking me to do it again since the recent market dip. So that is exactly what I thought I'd do today. We're going to be taking a look at what's gone on recently. Is the coin undervalued? What's been happening in terms of buys and sells with it recently? And so on. And we're going to look at what's going to send it to the moon and what could potentially send it crashing down. So Crypto.com coin currently is down 13% on the day. It's have a little rise in the last few hours since 9 o'clock. And taking a look at the all-time chart, we can see that it has fallen down massively in the last few weeks from highs and all-time highs of $0.25 all the way down to today $0.12. Now, in terms of, you know, undervalued or overvalued, etc., etc., I am no financial advisor. Anything I say should not be taken as grounds to invest. One thing that I personally look at when I'm looking at CRO coin is I think, right, back in, you know, July, August and September, this coin and October, this coin was currently at a higher price than it is now. So, you know, throughout, the, throughout this period in 2020, the value of the coin was higher than it is today. And the thing that strikes me about that is that the crypto boom has occurred in 2021. And in 2021, there's going to be so many new users all on crypto and trading crypto. All up in my head, that's how I behave. Passing up the same, waking up the same. All up in my head, that's just how I behave. How I behave.